G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have a new reef tank for you. It's a big one, it's 1300 litres. It has some amazing corals, but most of all, it has an amazing assemblage of fish. There are some amazing tanks in this tank. And for this reason, we've called this tank, Tang Town. So, won't you let me take you to Tang Town. So check it out. This tank is 2.3 meters long, so it's almost eight feet. It's two and a half feet wide, which is 75 centimeters, and it is 80 centimeters tall, so just over two and a half feet tall. So it is a big tank, and it's been here running like this for around about a year. And it's taken a little while to get through the ugly phase. The problem algae are generally associated with a young tank, but now it's really coming into its own. And we're getting some uh, really good growth out of the corals, some really good coloration. But most of all, the fish are absolutely loving this tank. And you can understand why it's such a big tank with a great aquascape, lots of swimming space. But most importantly of all, there's a really nice assemblage of fish. And we're going to focus today on the fish that are in this tank and talk about some of the challenges that you can have when you have a mix of fish and in particular, the dynamic of the tangs in this tank. Before we talk about the fish in Tang Town, let's just have a quick talk about the equipment that's running it. First of all, we have Gen 5 Radions suspended on a Radion rail above this tank. There's four XR15 Gen 5s and two XR30s, and they're giving a great spread for this tank. The rock work in the tank, we've got carob sea shapes down the far end and this middle section here, and we've got a shed boy scape down this end, which has just recently been put in place, and we're yet to glue the corals onto the shed boy scape. And there are a lot of corals down here that still need to be glued as well. There is an absolute arsenal of wave makers on this tank. We've got a pair of Gaia 350s. We've got a number of uh, Nero's. I think we've got a seven and a five. And we've got four MP40 uh, um, Ecotech uh, wave makers. Let's talk about the uh, equipment running this tank underneath the tank. Under the tank, you can see we've got our custom plumbing and it feeds uh, the drainage into a Red Sea uh, reef mat 1200, the larger size and we have a refugium section here. It's hard to see without the light on. Uh, there's a Kessels which is powering it and we do get amazing ketomorpha growth in this refugium. We also have a um, UV twist 57 watt which is mounted back here fed by the manifold and our skimmer is an Octo, uh, I think it's a Regal 200 um, which is pulling a really good amount of skim out of the tank. So let's talk about the most exciting part of uh, Tang Town, and that is the fish. So this peninsula tank has got a heap of fish in it, and we've just tested the water, and the nitrate has come in at 15, and the phosphate at 0.1. Now, one of the things that people often ask us is how many fish can I have in my tank? And what I will typically tell people that ask this question is that you can have as many fish as you can accommodate in terms of the space within the tank, as well as the amount of nutrients that they're producing. Now, because the nitrate at 15 is uh, probably on the max where we wanna have it with the types of corals we've got, I'd probably say that we're at our maximum number of fish in the tank. Uh, also, there is a lot of space in the tank and we could physically put more fish in and they'd still have adequate swimming space. However, it's really the nutrients which is what will hold us back from putting many more fish in the future. There are plans to put in a couple of more fish, but they're only small fish with relatively minimal biomass. So we'll talk about the fish that we've got in here, starting with the fish that are not tangs. We're behind the tank in the office area. This tank is, of course, a room divider, and it gives us a good opportunity to look at some of the smaller fish that are in this tank. And uh, the first fish that I notice is one of the, the smaller, more cryptic fish, are the gold line cardinals. Now, there are quite a few of these in this tank. Uh, there are actually, there's a few with mouthfuls of eggs. They're a mouth brooding fish. Um, we've also got uh, the squamopinus anthias, and 
you can see these guys are a great dither fish. Uh, they're a nice orange, they swim high in the tank. Now typically the males of these, uh, this species go a deep purple, um, but uh, we don't actually have any fully colored up males in the tank at the moment. Uh, we've also got the Liatel hog. We've got uh, a number of wrasse. There's a Coutier's wrasse, a Melanurus wrasse. Um, there's a Royal Grandma. We've got uh, a Flame Angel, which is absolutely beautiful just over here. But really the dominant group of fish in this tank are the tangs. So I wanna run you through the tangs that we've got and how they get along in a tank like this. So let's talk about the tangs in Tang Town and I'm gonna set myself a little challenge. I'm gonna try and name all the tangs in Tang Town as quickly as I possibly can. So we'll start off with the blue tang, the powder blue tang, the powder brown tang, the Achilles tang, we've got a gem tang, a purple tang, we have a sailfin tang, and is there a yellow tang? So we've nine fish, <laughs> nine tangs. So I may or may not have missed one or two tangs, but regardless, uh, the compatibility of tangs, even in a large tank, is something that you really need to consider. Now we normally talk about the two different types of tangs, uh, and it's a bit of a rough sort of thing, but uh, basically we can break them up into two types, and that is the Acanthurus tangs, which are typically like our powder brown and our powder blue, the more elongate, oval-shaped tangs. And then we have our Zebrasoma species, which are the ones which are more uh, vertically elongate. They typically have more of a, a slender sort of nose area. Things like the sailfin tang, the gem tang, uh, and the purple tang in this case. Now, in some tanks, particularly smaller tanks, you can generally have a single zebrasoma and a single acanthurus, and they'll generally be okay. They're not typically as aggressive to each other as the zebrasomas are to each other or the acanthurus are to each other. But when you're talking about a large tank, so something along the size of this, which is well and truly over a thousand liters, you can definitely go for a mix of tanks. But the important thing is about how you introduce them into the tank. And so typically I would be putting in the more timid fish first. Um, so possibly the acanthurus and the more delicate ones, the uh, powder blues, uh, the powder browns, maybe the Achilles, but certainly let them get established in the tank before you put the more dominant sailfin and uh, purple tangs. The zebrasomas in general are a bit more hardy. Uh, they're more resistant to disease. And so if you are gonna put your fish in um, over, if you're gonna stage them in, having the more delicate ones in first is generally the, the best idea. But what a lot of people will do is they'll actually get all their tanks in quarantine and put them into the display tank at the one time. That can be very difficult though because you do have to have enough space in the quarantine and you don't want them fighting if they're in the same quarantine tank. But something else which I would definitely suggest doing when you are introducing a new individual tank into a tank like Tang Town is to have an isolation box. So something that is big enough for the tank survive, to survive happily for a week or two in your tank, um, generally they're made out of clear acrylic, that you can have the new fish in once he's come through quarantine in the isolation box so the other fish can see him, get used to the fact that he's in the tank before you then release him into the display tank. It also gives you opportunity to see if there is gonna be any obvious aggression. You'll generally be able to tell the fish um, in the tank going for the one in the isolation box. But the dynamic of your tangs is particularly important in a tank like this. And we're gonna show you an example of what can happen if the dynamic isn't perfect. So I want to show you the Achilles tank in this tank. Now the Achilles is probably one of the most uh, beautiful, but also delicate fish that we have in Tang Town. And there are two things that I've seen today that are a little bit of a worrying uh, sign. And the first is the cloudy eye, and the second is there is a rip in the dorsal fin. I'll come around and talk about it more. So it's his right eye and it's glazy. 
Now we often get the question about what this means if you have a fish like a tang with a, a cloudy or glazed eye and it, it can be caused from a number of things. And probably the first thing I mentioned to people is that it can be a fluke. And a, by that I mean a parasitic monogenian worm that is on the outside of the eye of the fish and it can cause damage to the eye to cause it to be glazed or the actual worm itself can cause that, that cloudy look to the eye. And so potentially a freshwater bath might be in order, but in this case, I'm pretty confident it's caused from aggression in the tank because there is that second sign of the tear in the dorsal fin, so the top fin at the top. So my suspicion is that there's been some aggression in this tank and that the Achilles has either copped a scratch from uh, the, uh, the, the scalpel on the caudal peduncle of another tang, so that little sharp bit at the base of the tail, it's hit him in the eye, or more likely, he's just been uh, given a bit of a uh, push around and the Achilles has ended up scratching himself on a rock or a coral or something like that. Now, typically, uh, the cloudy eye like this will go away by itself if it isn't an indication of a further problem like uh, parasitic worms. Um, and in this case, uh, assuming that the aggression doesn't continue and isn't too bad, I think that this Achilles will be totally, totally fine. And everything I've seen since I've been here today really makes me think that this is going to be a one-off problem and that this Achilles will uh, recover and be totally fine. Another thing we really need to talk about is the quarantine process for the fish in Tang Town. Now Tangs, as we all know, are particularly susceptible to protozoan diseases, in particular white spot, marine white spot. And so all of the fish in Tang Town have gone through a rigorous quarantine period where they're isolated for 30 days before they're in, put into this tank here. Now, when it comes to uh, the Achilles Tang, if it happens that it doesn't get better and uh, that uh, patch on the eye doesn't go away, we can actually put it back into the quarantine tank and give it a period of isolation for it to recover before it comes back into Tang Town. And that's an example of when we would use that isolation box to reintroduce the Achilles Tang back into Tang Town. Tang Town is definitely a work in progress. We have quite a lot of work to do with the gluing in of the corals, uh, with the finishing off the reef and maybe even adding a, a small number more fish. But also we wanna put a pelmet above the tank just to uh, hide the, the lights and the water line. So something which covers this up. There is normally a cover for here, but we've taken it off today so that we can see the equipment underneath Tang Town. But there's definitely a lot of progress that we can make and we'll bring you back in future episodes of Gallery Aquatica TV to show you the progress of this amazing reef. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Hopefully you've enjoyed this trip to Tang Town. This awesome reef really has got some great fish and it's always a pleasure to come and see it. So now I just have to glue in some corals. So thanks for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.